Hey there, Salim Razai here again with another Walking the Line from Research to Practice. And today we're going to be talking about the PLUS trial, which is looking at balanced versus unbalanced crystalloids for the resuscitation of critically ill patients. Now, we know there's been this massive debate. Do we do balanced crystalloids? Do we do unbalanced crystalloids? Every study's kind of been a little bit different, looking at very specific populations, and the results have been all over the place. So just some of them, not all of them, but the SMART trial in 2018, looking at critically ill patients, showed improved mortality. The SALT-ED trial in 2018 showed a decrease in make 30 or what they called major adverse kidney events at 30 days. The SMART Part 2 trial specifically looked at sepsis patients and showed that balanced crystalloids decreased acute kidney injury. And then the most recent study was the BASICS trial, which was published in 2021 and showed no difference in mortality. And so people have just been going back and forth and saying that, man, for large volumes, we should be basically resuscitating these patients with balanced crystalloids. The clinical question the authors of this randomized clinical trial were trying to answer was, do balanced crystalloids reduce death in critically ill patients in the ICU versus 0.9% saline solution? This was 53 ICUs in Australia and New Zealand, and they basically compared plasmolite 148 versus 0.9% saline solution. Now, many of us don't use plasmolite 148. We use things like lactated ringers or Hartman's. This study does not look at that specific balanced crystalloid. It is specifically looking at plasmolite 148. The primary outcome was 90-day mortality, and an important secondary outcome was new renal replacement therapy. Just about 5,000 patients, pretty big study, um, and really does a good job. 33% came from the ED. The reason I mention this is that a lot of previous studies, a lot of the patients came from elective surgeries or from the operating room. So a third of these patients are coming from the emergency department. They were also really sick in this study. 79%, four out of five people were on mechanical ventilation and almost 50% had sepsis coming into this trial. So again, this is the sickest of the sick coming from the ED, mechanically ventilated, septic. This is the kind of study I wanna see the answer for. Both groups received about four liters of fluid. I mentioned this as well because a lot of previous trials most patients were getting less than two liters of fluid. And honestly, I got to tell you, if you're giving a patient less than two liters of fluid, it probably doesn't matter what you're giving them with very specific exceptions. So here's our primary and secondary outcome on the left, plasmolite 148 versus 0.9% saline. And here's what they ended up finding. No difference. No difference whether you gave the plasmolite or the 0.9% saline no statistical difference between the two groups or for the primary or secondary outcome. Now, this was given over a long period of time. This was given over seven days, which is maybe not what we're doing in the emergency department. But again, the amount that was given was very large, was over three liters, almost four liters in, in a lot of cases. Now, I think a lot of us are getting smarter using ultrasound and using other kind of fluid responsive technologies to help us guide and individualize fluid replacement. I also think the days of giving liters upon liters upon liters of fluid has probably gone way of the dodo bird. It's not something that we're all commonly doing. The primary outcome got evaluated in six pre-specified subgroups. So they looked at people who were septic versus not septic, over 65 versus under 65. They looked at a bunch of things and that statistically not significant result stayed true in every subgroup that they looked at. Again, baseline characteristics. Patients were equally sick, got equal amount of things with one exception that we'll get into, but otherwise coming into the trial, most patients were pretty evenly balanced. So this is the point I'm getting at, and I'll go a little bit more into the specifics, but the type and rate of fluid was not controlled for before the patients went to the ICU and after they got out of the ICU. And it's really important to understand that when we go through it. The average time to randomization was two days, which I think is a really long time. I mean, how many things do we do for patients that are critically ill in two days? I'm thinking about vasopressors. I'm thinking about the fact that they were on mechanical ventilation. Maybe we're giving them things like vancomycin, which could be nephrotoxic. There's lots of things that we do. You would think that they would be able to randomize these patients a little bit quicker, but this is what we got and it's a limitation of the study. 
Now, this is the biggest limitation of this study is there was a lot of contamination. So what do I mean by contamination? Well, what I mean is, is that if you got randomized to plasma light, 63% of people still got 0.9% saline because a lot of medications they were giving were not compatible with balanced crystalloids, so they had to be given in saline, whereas people who got randomized to the 0.9% saline, only 3.5% got plasma light. So there's a huge discrepancy here where we're not purely comparing balanced versus unbalanced. There is some contamination of the balanced group with 0.9% saline. So I had to keep track of all this because it was really complicated to go through the study, but this is basically how it went down. So the first 24 hours prior to randomization, people who got randomized to plasma light, 55% of those people got over 500 cc's of 0.9% saline, whereas only 23% got over 500 cc's of plasma light in the saline group. Now, once they got into the study, the authors did a really good job, very tight control, People got about the same amount of fluids and the same type of fluid that they were randomized to. And then once again, once they got out of the ICU, you can see there's a huge contamination rate. 63% in the plasma light group got 0.9% saline, whereas only 3.5% in the saline group got plasma light. Now, they did exclude traumatic brain injury patients, and we know that in patients who have potential for increased intracranial uh, pressures, we want to keep their sodium levels higher so that we're not giving them balanced crystalloids. We're trying to keep our sodiums at about the 150 to 155 milliequivalent range. The bottom line, I always give you a bottom line. The fluid type most likely does not make a difference on mortality minus TBI patients, and maybe you could make an argument for DKA patients. There is some early evidence that shows that balanced crystalloids are the superior fluid in that patient population. I suspect it's going to be cost, it's going to be availability, drug compatibility, and whatever other factors are involved that are going to determine which fluids we give. And the final thing I'll say is that unlike previous trials, they got over three liters of fluid and still showed no difference, even though there was contamination in this study. Tell me what your thoughts are on balanced versus unbalanced crystalloids. Leave me comments, leave me questions, and until next time.